Welcome back to another episode of Driven in Her Purpose. I'm Rosie Leonore, your host, and I am so excited to have you with me today. Today we have another special guest. Her name is Hallie Brooke. She is a nationally board certified functional medicine nutritional counselor and health coach. And I'm so happy to introduce you to her. Welcome, Hallie. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Rosa. It's so wonderful to be here. I'm so happy that to have you here. I've been looking forward to having this time with you. I'm very happy we can finally get to do it. Thank you Thank so much you. for being here. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So, you know, why don't we start by you telling us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, totally. So um, I feel like <laughs> that's such a hard question. Tell me about yourself. Um, <laughs> like all of the things, I feel like we answer that question so often as women, especially as what we do. Like, yes. oh, well, this is my job. So I'm just going to break that mold. Um what, who am I? I am blonde and smiley. I love the outdoors. So I'm a mountain biker. I'm a whitewater rafter. I love hiking. I love backpacking and climbing 14ers. I also can really get into a good book with some tea on the couch. Um, who else am I? I am a daughter of the King. Jesus is my number one. Um, those are probably the most important things about me. And then what I do for work. Well, let's do this. My life mission um, is to bring health, healing, and wholeness to women by teaching healing. So that's what I do. And the avenues that I do that through is functional medicine, nutrition, and health coaching. I'm excited to find out more about functional medicine. So I can't wait to dive in. Uh, yeah. I know I understand you're also the founder of, of Live Nourish, correct? Yep. Okay. Nourished. Can't wait to find out more about that as well. Re really excited. So let's talk about diets. All right. Yeah. We, we oh. all know, we all know that diets don't really work. <laughs> I think if, if there's not a listener who's ever tried a diet, a diet, I, I doubt it. I'm sure pretty much everyone has tried some kind of diet, including myself. Mm -hmm. And I found that it doesn't really work, at least not in the long haul or either there's side effects or you're just not happy. There's always something that happens. So what do we do instead? I know it's a loaded <laughs> <Yeah>. question. <laughs> totally. It is a loaded question, but we really can't answer it shortly. Yeah. Um, so the diet industry is crazy. It's a $300 billion industry with a 95% fail rate. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like, That's crazy. The definition of insanity is continuing to do the same thing over and over and expecting different results. And we just keep throwing money at the diet industry and something with a 95% fail rate. Like if you... Man, if you were being sold a car and they said, yeah, 95% of the time this car won't work, would you buy it? Absolutely not. Um, but for some reason, when it comes to our bodies, we're just like, oh yeah, this, this diet will probably work. I'll try this one. Um, so it's just, it's insane. The diet industry is insane. Um, so the short answer is what do we do instead is we learn what our body needs and how our body processes food. One of the main failures of the diet industry specifically is it outsources our knowledge about the way our body works to an app or a menu plan or something else. We outsource whether or not we're full based on our calorie counter. We outsource whether or not something is good for us based on what it says on the box in front of us instead of what our body is actually telling us. So step number one is start listening to your body because your body is designed to tell you what's working for it, what's not working for it, when you're full, when you're not full, whether you've spent enough energy to eat that thing today or not, like your body is designed to do this. So step number one is learning to listen to your body. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. Listening to our body. Okay. So um, can you give us an example of what that looks like, for example? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So um, I often bring up keto just because keto is such a big buzz term right now. Okay. Keto might be the absolute best thing for your sister-in-law and the absolute worst thing for you. So diets, and I, I switch diets to food plans. One, like food plans are not a one size fits all. It, it has to do with how your body processes food. So one of the things that we do with our clients when they first come to us is we do what's called a food mood poop journal. It sounds super goofy. Um, <laughs> I talk about poop all the time. It's a very normal <laughs> thing. Um, but what we do is we have clients track. So we don't change anything about their diet. I just say for one week, I want you to track what you're eating, what your energy level in your mood is at certain times of day and what your poop looks like. And from that, it's not rocket science. I can put that in front of a client and all of a sudden they go, 
oh my gosh, when I eat this, I crash two hours later every single time. And we go, yep, that's because your body isn't processing X, Y, Z well. Versus when I eat this, two hours later, I feel awesome. And we go, yeah, that's because your body's processing that well. I have one client who, so low carb is like the big highlight, right? I have one client who has an Italian background and had tried everything, tried keto, tried paleo, tried low carb, tried Octavia, tried all of these things, couldn't lose weight to save her life, came to us. We did a food mood poop journal and what her body processes well is actually carbohydrates. So all of these super high fat, super high protein diets, they were putting her body into an inflammatory response when really her body needed complex carbohydrates. And so she's been doing all of these low carb diets, couldn't lose weight because her body's in fight or flight. We increase the carb ratio in her diet and she starts losing weight. Um, Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. And that's because she'd outsourced what's good to all of the things on Google that tell her what's good versus actually listening to her body and her body going, yo, I could really use a sweet potato right now. Mm, <laughs> and so we gave I, her that and it, it fixed it, which is pretty cool. That's amazing. It's like, it's, it's, it's almost like, uh, it, it makes so much sense. It's like, wh- wow, it, it seems easy. And I know that it's, it's hard to do it yourself. I, I I'm sure that's why you're a coach. Mm-hmm. Right. But it, it's, it's so simple. And yet so many of us don't do it. They don't do yeah. this. They don't, they don't exactly. get help. We don't get help. I, I myself and include, I've, I've had to do, I've done things my way for years, you know? Yep. So I, I know that a lot of our, our listeners right now are like, Ooh, well, uh-huh. <laughs> I think I need yeah. to make some changes here. <laughs> yep. Totally. For sure. For sure. Awesome. Well, you know, earlier when, when we were off the, off the show earlier, I know we were chatting a little bit about, uh, you mentioned functional medicine and I'm really curious yeah. about what that is and, um, how do you, what, what you do with that. So what is functional medicine? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Functional medicine is awesome. So functional medicine is root cause medicine. So <clears throat> what I think is really important to say is functional medicine is not in any way anti-Western medicine at all. We work very well together. We're very well integrated. Um, but what functional medicine does is it says, okay, you know, there's these, these things that are happening in our body that are dysfunctional. We've got eczema on our skin. We have gas and bloating. We have chronic fatigue or those dark circles under your eyes that just don't go away regardless of how much you sleep. Like there's, our body is telling us that things are off. And what functional medicine says is those things are the fire alarm. Those are telling us that something is off in our body. And now we need to go look for the root cause of that. So um, we can fix dark circles under our eyes with eye cream, but as soon as we stop using that eye cream, it's going to come back. We can fix eczema with a steroid cream, but as, as soon as we stop using that, it's going to come back. Functional medicine says, why is that here in the first place? And so we go look for the root cause, which is often um, nutritional deficiencies, gut permeability. So gut health is huge. Hippocrates back in, uh, so back 2,500 years ago said all health begins in our gut and all disease begins in our gut. And we now have the science to back that up. So it took us 2,500 years to like catch up with what wow. he knew from way back then. But that's what, that's what functional medicine is. So instead of kind of putting a bandaid on the problem or turning off the fire alarm and thinking the problem solved, right. we go find the fire. Okay. Okay. That, that sounds amazing. So let me ask you this. Um, and, and I know that probably functional medicine is, is a part of this, right? Um, this answer. What do you think are some key, what do you find that are some key nutrients that we should be, all of us in general, right? That every single person, what are some key nutrients that we should be in making sure that we get every single day? Oh, I love this question. Um, I love this question because so many people come to me and go, oh, well, I don't take a multivitamin because multivitamins don't work. They're right. Um, low quality multivitamins don't work. High quality multivitamins do. But multivitamins aside, Um, There's really four that I say every single person needs and at least 80% of us in the United States and Western countries are deficient. And so the first one is vitamin D3, K2. Um, Anybody who lives north of the 38th parallel is deficient in D3, no matter what you do, no matter how much time you get outside, we cannot get enough sun from October till May. Um, And then if you work in an office or you work inside, you're deficient year round. And then K2, so we get a ton of K1 from plants. 
K2 is a little bit harder to get. We can really only get it from animal protein. And the reason K2 is so crucially important is because K2 is what directs your D3 and your calcium to your bones. So if you're only taking D3, you can end up with the calcification of your arteries because that calcium is going to be absorbed wherever it is. So D3, K2 is a huge one. Everyone is deficient and we all need it. Magnesium is my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, studies now show that 80% of Americans are deficient in magnesium, largely because of the way we're farming now. Our soil doesn't have it in it. So even if you are eating really good, clean food, you're not getting magnesium. And magnesium is in charge of 300 plus functions in your body. So we're, when we're deficient, I feel like magnesium is my super drug because I can fix everything with magnesium. Wow. I can fix fatigue. I can fix constipation. I can fix brain fog. I can fix restless leg syndrome. Like I can fix everything. Sign me up. Sign me up. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, so those are two big ones. So D3, K2 and magnesium. Um, the next kind of combo pack that I think is really important is zinc, selenium, and, um, copper zinc, selenium, and copper often come together. And most, a lot of people are deficient in those and the common cold can be deadly if you're deficient in zinc, selenium, and copper. And again, zinc, selenium, and copper come from our soil. So that one's huge. And then the last one that I think is kind of a baseline everyone needs is actually B12. We used to think that just vegans and vegetarians were deficient in B12 and somehow B12 came from meat. We actually now know that B12 comes from bacteria. So the reason meat tends to have more B12 is because, you know, cows and chickens are eating things off the ground and they're getting that bacteria from the soil. But now industrial farming practices, we've destroyed that soil so much that we don't have that bacteria that creates B12. So B12 is a huge one that we now know five and seven people are deficient in. So those are my big ones. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I never heard of K2. Was it K2? I, mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever heard of that. That, that was yep. like, there's a couple in there that I'm like, wow, really? I, I had no idea. That's yeah. A, yeah. And a lot of people don't, which is super yeah. sad. And I've talked, I love doctors. I have wonderful doctor friends and especially with COVID being such a thing. You know, yeah. we've been shouting from the rooftops, take D3, take D3, oh, take yeah. D3, for sure. And the functional medicine community has been over here like, and K2, <laughs> like, please wow. don't calcify your arteries. Um, and so I've had a lot of conversations oh. with my medical friends who said we were never taught this and they weren't like they were oh. medical professionals are very much taught um, pharmaceuticals. They're not taught these integrated things. Same thing with zinc mm. and copper. If you increase your zinc, you have to increase your copper because if you mm. don't increase your copper, you won't be able to absorb zinc. So there's these little kind of nuances that yep. it's not just a supplement. It's what is that supplement paired with? And does it come from a food or is it synthetic that we have to pay attention to? Wow. Amazing. <laughs> I mean, this is just like, um, I feel like this is a college course right here. <laughs> a mini college course. <laughs> You're getting your PhD right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting my PhD. This is amazing. <laughs> All right. Well, so, um, you know, a lot of people, we know a lot of people have a hard time with, uh, you know, eating, maybe they might struggle out. And I, I, I may say maybe even a hundred percent at some point in our lives, we have a hard time struggling with eat, eating or exercising, taking care of ourselves. And I know this yeah. is a very broad question. Maybe we can break it down into eating and exercising and then in just in general, but, and I think eating and exercising are two of the big ones. Cause, um, they're both kind of difficult to do, right? You, you want to eat what you want to eat. You want to eat the good stuff that's not good for you. And you want to not really exercise unless you're just, unless that's just your type, maybe type eight personality, you have to, or whatever. I, I don't know, but I know for me, it's, it's a struggle to mm. get consistent with exercise or stay consistent. So why do you think people, generally speaking, why do you think people struggle so much with that, with eating, with exercising in general? Ooh, that's a great question. I have to think about that for a second. <laughs> I think, honestly, I think part of it is because, especially in the United States, I think, I think Western countries in general, we have prioritized so much um, efficiency and technology that we don't actually even know what it feels like to feel good anymore. Mm, yeah. um, and so it's so much easier to go through the drive through because it's efficient. And so when I'm efficient and I can get my lunch done in 10 minutes and then have time to 
scroll on my phone or whatever. Um, that is what we have come to prioritize as a culture. And it's so interesting. I have, I feel like every client I work with says to this to me, but um, one in particular who absolutely does that business owner, super high paced. I don't have time to cook. I don't have time to exercise. Like I work 60 hours a week. That's the kind of client this person is. Um, and so one of the things we talked about was, you know, what are you sacrificing by always prioritizing efficiency? So I gave her a challenge and I just said, I want you for one week to not overbook yourself. Can you do that? And she said, yes, I can do that. So one week she didn't overbook herself, which was like a miracle for this woman to do. Um, and in that week, she cooked meals that were homemade. She went for walks. So super simple, not like hardcore CrossFit. And at the end of the week, she goes, I feel so good. I didn't even know that I felt bad before. She wow. was like, I thought I was overweight. And that's the only thing I needed to deal with. Like I needed to lose weight. But now that I've taken care of myself for a week, I didn't even know that I felt bad. And I think, I think that's, that's a huge piece is we prioritize the wrong thing. And so we don't even know that we feel like junk. That's that, that makes a lot of sense. I, I think, um, I, I remember I watched this documentary, I think it's called heal or something. I watched a lot of it. I don't remember it was called heal or something like that anyway. And some, they made some good points. And I remember is to, to on to what you said, same thing. We're living it, especially in this Western culture where it's, it's all about the rush, uh, working a lot, uh, nonstop and we don't, we're not as intentional about things. We're not as intentional about stopping and just, you know, I know it's an old quote, but you know, smell the roses, right. Or yeah. enjoy that, that meal, eat slowly, savor it, stop rushing, uh, mm. you know, choose the right foods. Yes. You might have to do meal planning, but that's, if that's what you have to do, then integrate that into your time. Like these are things that are so important. And yet we're living in a society that is so rushed all the time. And, and like you said, technology getting more advanced and I know it has, it's good. I mean, you and I are talking because of technology, right, right yeah. here in, in two different parts of this, of the, the country. But at the same time, it's, it's like, yeah, this is good, but it, it can, if you don't have full control, if you don't take control of it, it can really be detrimental. Yeah. So you made a really good point about that. Yeah. You have, you, you are so right. Um, so I wanted to ask you, you know, I, I'm very impressed with the things that you're doing. I, I know that um, I, I want to ask you, first of all, the things that towards the end, I'd love to find out a little bit more about what you have to offer women. We would definitely want to yeah. know how we can connect with you. But before we do that, I wanted to ask you, you know, being a health coach, that's just, I know that you're more than just a health coach, but <laughs> nationally yes. board certified. That's a big deal, ladies. That's a big, it deal. Is a big deal. Really big deal. She, she's, she's legit. All right. So more than just a health coach. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, um, maybe a little bit about your journey becoming a health coach and what advice would you give to our listeners who maybe, you know, they're interested in that kind of thing. Maybe they want to be a health coach. Maybe they're, they want to help people with their, with their wellness. Uh, what, what tips or what piece of gold nugget maybe you can give our listeners that are interested Ooh, in that? That's a good one. Okay. Um, yeah. So my journey and then a gold nugget out of that. So my journey is kind of a beautiful circle I came out of college really interested in health. I kind of toyed with the idea of going to med school for a while and then ended up teaching um, in Title I schools. I taught math for nine years. So super hard left turn from medicine. And through that process, um, two things happened. One, I got super sick myself because mm. uh, chronic stress is horrible for you. Um, I'm a teacher. I know. <laughs> yeah, amen. I feel you. <laughs> Girlfriend, I <laughs> so much love and props. Yes. <laughs> Speaking is so rewarding and so hard. Yes, People it is. Do not understand. Yep. Um, yeah. So <laughs> teaching is hard. Teaching in a Title I school is really hard. Mm -hmm. um, and just chronic stress, I ended up with really gnarly gut issues, went to a bunch of doctors. They all told me I had IBS, which I have since worked for a GI doctor. And I said, what is IBS? And she goes, that's what we tell people when we don't know what's wrong with them and we don't have a drug to fix it. And I was oh, like, wow. oh, um, so we now have, you know, different terms for IBS. We've got SIBO and celiac and all of these things that we actually can fix, but 
anyway, I got diagnosed with IBS before all of that was a thing and basically got to a point where I said, I, I can't live like this anymore. This is not sustainable. All I can eat is chicken and lettuce. It's the only thing I can keep down. Um, wow. and I have to, I have to find a different option. So I started down this path of like, okay. Um, I know a lot of your listeners are believers. I'm a believer too. So this path of the Lord created my body to heal itself. So if that's true, then whatever is going on in me can be healed. And the tools that the Lord has given us to heal with are food. So if he's given us food to heal, then food should heal. And this should be figure outable for <laughs> lack of an actual word. Yep. Um, so I started doing a ton of research on gut health and what that is and how to heal it. And with that and a lot of prayer ended up fully healed. Um, I can eat whatever I want. I have no gut issues. I've learned to manage my stress. And so thank you, Jesus. Um, and so that kind of pulled me back out of teaching and started scratching my science itch. And I was like, I have to go this direction. Um, so that's, that's where I've ended up. And then it's been a beautiful journey of that. And then, you know, functional medicine is an incredible tool and it's so beautiful. And nutrition is not the only piece of the puzzle. It's a crucially important piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the other part of my story that has really dramatically affected me is I was married to a man who uh, decided he didn't want to be married anymore. And so he left. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was one of the most traumatic experiences I've ever been through. I don't believe in divorce. Mm -hmm. Um, there was no reason for divorce. He just left. And so in that process, I ended up with adrenal fatigue again, super high stress. Um, and learned that, you know, sometimes eating a burger and fries is actually a more nourishing choice than a salad. Um, that sometimes taking a nap is a more nourishing choice than going for a run and that to be truly well, like health is a state of body while being is a state or wellness is a state of being. Um, and so to be truly well, it's so far beyond just food, just exercise. It's how we think, how we process emotions, how we care for this, this human that we are, um, so that's that journey of how I ended up in this place. And that's, that's the mission of Live Nourish to teach people like how to actually live a life that they love, that they don't need to escape from, um, that's a in every story. way. Beautiful. Story. Yeah. Wow. Thanks. So that's Live Nourished. And then what I would say to a woman who wants to start her own business, whether it's getting into health coaching or doing something else mm -hmm. is sister, just keep going. Mm -hmm. Um, when I first started my business, it's just so easy. Same thing, Instagram, Facebook, to get sucked into looking at what someone else is doing and comparing yourself to that and saying, oh, well, I will never be there. Um, and it's just not true. So I would say, do not despise small beginnings. Um, because if you help one person with your business, that's one person who wasn't going to be helped before. Um, so have patience, keep going, stick with it and take care of yourself. Don't work 60 hours a week. Don't work a hundred hours a week. You matter too much. So I think that's my golden nugget is stick with it. Don't compare yourself and take care of yourself. And you will grow a business that is incredible and impactful and has purpose and meaning and value. That is amazing advice. Thank you so much, Hallie. That is, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's I, I really do believe in that. You, you have to keep going and you definitely have to start somewhere and you're not going to start with perfect. That's kind of like my main message. You know, uh, I feel like you just improve over time. You learn, you you do what well, this doesn't work or you try something else and that doesn't work where you do something else. And that's okay because it's all part of the growth process. And so yes. uh, that's what I want to encourage my listeners, uh, those that haven't really haven't started or have been hesitant or maybe even are on a pause or have kind of, shifted and not are not sure where to go next and one thing you said is um you know you mentioned you mentioned god because you know I, I know you're a daughter of the king and i am too very proud and uh you know god definitely i i do believe very much that god has a calling for each and every one of us and mm -hmm. uh and and it's noble to work in a, at a at a 
at a business or at a, a school, it's super noble. I still do it. I love it. I, I love what I do. At the same time, I also have this calling aside from teaching because I, I, I am good with teaching kids, but I also, I, I feel like I have a calling to teach women and to encourage and inspire women as well. So it doesn't mean that you just, you don't have to do one thing. You can do more than one thing and that's okay. If God's calling you to do the, this or that or both, then great. And maybe one day you may what you know you may be able to focus on one thing and it doesn't it, it's just I think that's just everybody has a different path but I believe that God has called us to do something great to impact in our own unique ways just like you said don't compare yourself I believe that's true it's so tempted to compare yourself oh this one's you know oh their 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 Instagram is has a thousand followers and or two thousand or whatever or more and mine only has like 200 or whatever and so or mm -hmm. it really doesn't it really does not matter because where we are is where God wants us to be at this time as yeah. long as we continue and I love your advice so thank you and I hope and that everyone was encouraged by that and so with that I wanted to ask you I always like to end the show with asking two things and I and, and I would hate to end it because I, I could talk to you forever because I, <laughs> I know wanna, I want to know so much more but um but <laughs> Um, I want to I want to end the podcast with asking you two questions. Um, but before we do that, I do want to. Well, I'll, I'll I'll do that first. Let me do that first, and then I want to make sure that the the ladies that are listening know how to connect with you, and know yeah. how you can help them. So let's do that first. What is um, maybe one or two of your favorite motivational quotes, or one of your favorite motivational quotes, and or and also what is one of your favorite Bible verses or scriptures? Oh, such a good question. So one of my favorite quotes right now is. Teddy Roosevelt, uh, the man in the arena. And it's a big, long, beautiful thing, um, that I don't have pulled up in front of me. So I can't like, I don't have that's the quote okay. memorized. That's okay. But basically Teddy Roosevelt, the man in the arena said, um, like the man in the arena is the one who is bruised and bloodied and sweaty. And he's the one doing the work. Take, take no, mm, take nothing from anyone who isn't in the arena. So especially for business owners, when you are taking that brave step of stepping out and trying something, the people who matter are the people who are in the arena with you. And that might be your spouse and your best friend who are cheering you on. That might be, you know, another business owner who you're going to for advice. Those are the people in the arena. And those are the voices that you need to be listening to. Do not listen to the voices of the people who are keyboard warriors telling you why your Instagram isn't cute. Do not listen to the people who aren't in the arena. If they aren't doing the work, their voice is not important. Um, and I just, I love, I love that quote. And it's so helpful, especially when you get discouraged or those negative voices come. And that, you know, that goes for ourselves too. Like, don't listen to the piece of us that's sitting back, not wanting to do the work. Like, those aren't the voices. So the man in the arena. Oh, so good. Um, <laughs> and then my favorite Bible verse is Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a hope in a future. Whew. Um, mm, and that, that one. one might make me cry. Oh. That is like my life verse. Um, when just to give you like 10 seconds of context, when my husband left me, Mm -hmm. Um, I had just left teaching to start my business. I was making, uh, $800 a month, $700 of that was going to rent at the gym that I was working at. Um, I had a mortgage that was 1700 and then food and all of these things. Um, and I look back at that season and, um, I had, I was like applying for jobs. I was doing all these things and somehow the math worked out. Like if I look at my spreadsheets of my budget from those times, the math does not make sense. Like I should be thousands of dollars in debt and not have a house and not have clothes. And I'm not. Um, and I just think about like his goodness and his faithfulness that even when something happens in your life that shouldn't happen, um, that, that isn't how he planned it, isn't how he intended it. Who, um, he has plans to prosper us and not to harm us, plans to give us a hope in a future. And that is just unequivocally true, whether it's business or relationships or friendships. So that's like, that is the biggest promise I think he's given me. And I hold to that like an anchor in a storm. 
Amen. That is actually one of my favorites as well. So when you said that, I was like, oh my gosh, I love that one. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I have it on my wall in my bedroom. Oh, it's it's an amazing scripture. It really is. Thank you so much for sharing that and for your story. You know, I know it's a very personal thing and I know that, uh, and I know a lot of us can relate. And so, you know, I know that this is going to encourage a lot of people just listening to you and just, you know, I love your heart. I love that you're so uh, transparent and clear and just so sincere and you know, you're definitely someone that just, and I, and I, I know I'm meeting you just for the first time, but I've been um, kind of, you know, following you a little bit with your, your website and, and your emails, getting your emails. And I'm like, this is, this is a wonderful person. I, I'm, a, and, and it's so good to just finally talk to you face to face. And so I, I'm so grateful that you've been here, that you were here with us today. And so I would love to know, and I'm sure we would love to know, how can, love to know how, well, what, how, how can you help, um, a woman's, let's say, if she wants to reach out, what do you, what do you have to offer uh, the woman? What services do you have to offer? And then how can that woman connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. So we really specialize in gut health, fatigue, brain fog, and weight loss. Mm -hmm. So if you're struggling with something with your body, call us. Um, a great way to get a hold of us is our website. So www.livenourishedcoaching.com. You can schedule a free consult on that website. And those free consults are really important because we, if we can't help you, we're going to send you to someone who can, we're not going to, we don't have people pay us if we can't help us help them. So, um, that free consult will at the very least point you in the right direction, whether it's it's us a code Rosa when you sign up for that because you heard us on this podcast. We'll give you 20% off whatever coaching package feels like a fit for you. Um, and then what we offer coaching package wise, we have a membership that's $25 a month, all the way up to a six month full comprehensive functional medicine package with everything birth till now health included. Um, and really our mission is to help people feel well and live well in the way that works and is the way that they define it. So in, in a budget that, that makes sense for them, we don't think healthcare should be a million dollar investment. Um, it's an investment for sure, but of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. So weight loss, brain fog, chronic fatigue, live coaching.com use the code Rosa. Awesome. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I, I know you mentioned membership. Uh, that actually sounds interesting. Can you tell us a little bit more about the membership? Yeah, absolutely. So we launched this membership after, gosh, I think five years of working with clients and having clients kind of telling us what they need and what support. And so we developed this membership largely because there's so much information out there about diet specifically, but also exercise and self-care and to be able to like cut through all the junk to figure out what is actually helpful. That's what we created the membership for. So with your membership, you get three coaching sessions per year. So one-to-one -one with either myself or one of my other two board certified health coaches. Um, we do a monthly expert call that's just for our members. So we have world-class functional medicine experts coming in to talk about stuff like intermittent fasting, constipation, um, the like emotional connection to chronic disease, all of these things that are so important. And then you get kind of that one-to-one, -one, you can question and answer with them. We also send out what we call our nourished box once a quarter. So once a quarter, we send you a box of all of our favorite things. Um, so our favorite supplements, our favorite oils, our favorite book, our favorite healthcare hack. I don't think I have them in my office, but like red lens glasses so that you can look at your phone and not mess up your melatonin at night. Wow. Um, just whatever is lighting us up. Cause I think sometimes we sort of get in a rut and we just need a little like uh, boost. Yeah. Um, so all our members get that box once a month. What else do we have in that? It's pretty loaded. Um, we did the math that it's like an $1,800 value for $25 a month. Right, right, right. It's pretty loaded. And we did that because what we heard from clients was whether they'd worked with us in a full package for six months and then they just need some continual support or they're just like, I get lost on Google when I look up keto and I just need someone to help me. We're like, we can do that. So that's our membership and it's pretty cool. It's what, it's awesome. what an amazing value. I mean, that, that, that price for what you get is incredible, incredible. Yeah. So ladies, 
take advantage because that is yeah. an amazing, you're not going to find that. I don't think you're going to find that anywhere else. So <laughs> it's that's pretty amazing. Awesome. I'm a big believer in community and membership. And so that's why I wanted to inquire more because uh, I think that's very important to have that, that community, the membership, the support. Sometimes yeah. if, if someone can't go do a one-on-one, -on -one, maybe they're like, well, I'd like to get some support, but Maybe right now I'm not going to do one-on-one -on -one coaching, but let, let me just test the waters and see. And then maybe later they do. This is a great way to introduce people. So thank you for providing that opportunity yeah. for women. That's, that's amazing. Well, thank you, Hallie, so much. You have been amazing. You're beautiful inside and out. Wonderful. And uh, I am so grateful to have had you on my show. Thank you for being here. I hope you had as much fun as I did. <laughs> I had a blast. I know. I'm, I'm like, we could keep talking for an hour. Thank yes. you so much for having me. This was so fun. And it's yes. so fun to meet you. Yeah. Thank you. It's great to meet you too. And so ladies, I will see you in the next one.